of, she is also a member of this union that must also be established. On doing her daily routes or daily work, which involves mopping, washing, cleaning the pantry as the office attendant, that was a norm, that was the norm that day. She was called by another worker who said that the supervisor would have asked for her presence. She obliged, she went to the office. And on her way going, she know she's just wondering, you know, what happened if they're gonna move her to do something else. Upon arriving at the supervisor, she was approached by police officers who proceeded to take her into a room, female police officer. She bared gloves and she asked the attendant to remove her garments. Now she's there, she's wondering why, as she said, why do I have to remove my clothes? The officers that told her to just do what was said. She took off her clothes. During that, she informed the officer that she was on her monthly menstrual cycle. And the officer told her that she would have to strip right down to her underwear. Now, there's a lot of males in the audience, but I'm sure you will have encountered with females, white sisters, mommies, and you know at that time, you go through a lot as a woman. And to be asked to strip right down to your undies and to inform the officer that I am on my monthly, you will think that some courtesy would have been extended to her. She was told she has to take off everything, which she made a mess because it was a heavy flow. Sorry to be so graphic, but periods of fact of life. You can I have it. to relate it. Uh, a search was carried out, a warrantless search, because she volunteered, because she had nothing to hide, as the sister said, and nothing was found. She was told to put back on her garments, of which she proceeded, and her hair was up in one, and the officer attempted to take out the bond that was there, and a poor body search was done. Nothing was found on her. She was then transported to the CID office where even in the process of going there, she keep asking, why are you taking me there? Why are you searching? What have I done? It is alleged that no form of information was given to her. She was there at the CID office. She asked for a phone call, which was denied. She asked that she can call her boyfriend, which was denied because she has two children, and she was more concerned about her children's well-being than her being sitting at the CID office, which was denied. She noted that while she was there, she asked that she be escorted to the bathroom to do a change. That was denied also, so a mess um, was made. Then she was taken to the washroom. Uh, hours passed and the word got to her um, boyfriend that she was at the CID department and he came and because of that visit, it trumped a visit uh, search at her home. Nothing was found at her home. She keep asking, why is it I'm here? What reason you're keeping me here? And nothing was um, responded to her. She stated that instead of being informed, she was told with explicit language to shut up and do not ask any questions with the explicit side. Now, during all this ordeal, I mean, one has to enter into her feelings and it was humiliating, the language that was said to her, but more so, the discrimination of her affiliation, as in her family. Her sister is, as persons know, as 
and her brother who got into some trouble also, they also were brought into. Their names were brought into and it got out of hand right there because she keeps telling them, do not bring in her families or any other persons. Um, around four o'clock or so, she was given back her phone, her purse, after being searched and told she can leave. When she finally spoke to an officer, he informed her that monies were stolen and she was one of the persons that they chose to um, search and do a thorough investigation with. She did a statement and she was released. And that was, she came to the office she lodged a report. We would have sent letters to the Ministry of Health, to Mr. Pierce. And what our member is seeking is just an apology. An apology from the um, her supervisors or the persons who would have in, called her name, involved her in this incident. And it has not been forthcoming. She has returned to work, but as she noted, it's not the same as before. She's uncomfortable because the, the synergy has been lost and the family that she thought she had down there, the camaraderie, it has been lost. And she's just asking for a, an apology, which it seems as if it's not forthcoming. And that is, in essence, the issue that we are dealing with at the moment. Just to comment on, on um, that incident, the union would have written to Permanent Secretary and the Minister of Health, Mr. Cuthbert Knights, as the union representing that particular worker. And we would have asked for a meeting to have that matter discussed and addressed. One of the things that we said we ask of him is that there needs to be an investigation because the police cannot just go on your job as a public servant and remove you there is a procedure for that within the public service regulations so the permission has to be given by the either the permanent secretary or the head of that institution for her to be searched someone at the hospital had to give the permission to search her. And up to this time, no one has accepted responsibility. When we wrote the PS, he responded by stating that the worker is a member of the CTAW, and as such, they have reached out to him. But the worker is a member of the Public Service Union. So our response was that it is her constitutional right to belong to any trade union she so choose. And what she has done over the years is that she has chosen to be represented by the public service union. And as such, you have a responsibility to have dialogue with her representative union to have this matter addressed. We have not gotten a word in over a month in response from the permanent secretary. We got the impression that this matter, they are making every attempt to sweep it under the carpet. At the hospital, the majority of workers are women. Where that person was working, they did not search one other soul. And I'll say this, I know that they were not gonna search any of the staff nurses. I know they were not gonna search any of the ward managers or anybody higher up. But because this work is a low salaried worker, this is the problem I have with what has transpired here. A low salaried worker was treated really, really badly and humiliated. And no one has anything to say. You are just supposed to keep your mouth shut. In fact, I understand that she was told if she make too much noise, she can lose her job. I mean, her job was threatened. 
and the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Health who has the responsibility to look into this issue because any regulations he should have been the one to give to call to summon the police if they think a crime has been committed. But as far as I'm aware, he didn't do that because he was unaware of the incident. But as the head of the ministry, he has a responsibility to look into it. But he's flatly refused to meet with the union to have the matter addressed. And sometimes I, I, I get the feeling that these permanent secretaries, this one in particular, feels that he's empowered maybe by the politician to do as they like and to treat people as they like. What has happened to this lower salaried worker can happen to any lower salaried worker. What has happened to this lady can happen to any female. It is an abuse of women, plain and simple. And it has happened within the Ministry of Health. And no one is doing anything about it. There is no accountability, none. And these sort of behaviors must not continue to happen in any workplace, especially the public service. So we are once again calling on Mr. Cutbutt Knights to take your responsibilities seriously and have this matter addressed. The union is still waiting on a meeting with you. You heard Cathy say all she's asking for is an apology, an apology from those who give the permission to search her and put her in that situation for the discrimination that she faced. That's all she needs. She's not suing you or the ministry. She just needs something as simple as an apology because of how she has been disrespected. And I trust that that will be forthcoming.